Hey, it's Rebecca. Welcome to Returning, a podcast to return to yourself and the wisdom within. I'm so glad you're here with me. Thanks for returning. Today, I'm returning with Maud Hurst. Maud is perhaps best known as an actress in the popular historical drama series Vikings. But beyond acting, Maud has developed a passion for mindfulness, meditation and yoga. And she shares her teachings online through her membership community. Like so many of us, Maud's life was transformed by hitting rock bottom when many key parts of her life came crumbling down all at once. In our conversation today, we are exploring the power of surrendering and allowing things to truly crumble when they are. Um, when they are crumbling, how reaching rock bottom can truly activate our purpose, the importance of creating space to listen deeply um, and be seen, and how nature can help us to attune to the multiple rhythms that life holds us in. At the end of this episode, you'll find a guided soul inquiry as always to explore what the wisdom within you is wanting to share with you today. I know how precious your time is, so let's jump right into opening sacred space together now. In the center of your heart, imagine a beautiful flower. With your next breath, invite it to open petal by petal, revealing a light in the middle. This light is your ancient, wise, intuitive self, inviting it to step forward now and together acknowledging the keepers and custodians of the land where I am, where you are, known and unknown. Beautiful, let's begin. Well, Maud, it's so, so great having you here. And, um, you know, as always, before I connect with a guest, I'm like, what is up for you right now? And I was just like, yes, when I heard, when you, when you responded was you, you responded saying, um, something that is really prevalent which I so resonate with is like slowing down to your own pace versus the collective pace yeah tell me more about that I just have felt in the last few months that the collective societal pace is so fast and you know we see it with anxiety and with everybody that I'm I'm working with and all my friends and family but I but I, I felt myself really going into that pace and I kept like feeling like I need to, to do more and to rush around um, and I was finding it more and more difficult to sit into stillness. So I think it's just this like a real reminder to come back to a place um, to check in with ourselves. And I find it like getting out in nature every day. It's like a must now because it's that's the kind of time where I actually rediscover what that natural pace is for myself. Um, because I don't feel that we can kind of create or be at our most authentic self if we're in that like heightened vibrational energy. I think we really do have mm. to ground and find ourselves uh, amongst the kind of chaos of it all. So for me, it's just become my absolute kind of focus of my self practice is like, what is my own pace? And and of course, that's going to change and evolve. But but right now, what does that pace feel like? Um, and 90% of the time, that's a lot slower than than where I'm sitting. Naturally. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's so true, isn't it? Yeah, I've definitely had that that invitation myself. I mean, I think I generally do, like it's generally a thing, (laughs) but particularly, particularly the past six months. Oh my God. Like, yeah, I've been really getting like slow down to the pace of the earth, slow down to the pace of the body, you know? And I reflect back on like periods, particularly say like with my creativity or maybe not even the, the essence of the creativity, but when you go into the producing versus the creativity, which you know, like in our modern world, it it is part of it, you know, like the production is part of the creativity, but it's so easy to just spend all your time or increasingly so in producing rather than creating. And yeah, for me, like creativity comes when you're in the moment. And that's why I love you mentioned nature before, because I've been teaching about nature and intuition for quite a while and it being a big part of my creative process and so he's like "Mm, what is it is it the inspiration and the beauty but recently I've been wondering maybe it's actually just because nature has no past or future it just like properly is in the moment and so is it just that we are aligning into the moment so we literally do slow down when we 
observe nature like properly are in it yeah. what do you reckon I think a couple of things I think there's a natural pace that nature has that when we're in it without trying because you know if we're sitting in our house and we try and connect to that pace we have to do something in order to get there whereas when you're in and you immerse yourself in nature you're part of the rhythm just naturally and I feel yeah. like something happens when you go and I also think it's about like every day we're confronted by walls and that's very much like it, it takes you back inward into like your own four walls and nature for me mm. anyway just like allows a space to like get above myself it's like get out of the experience of the mind get out of the walls and it just it kind of opens me up a bit more to that like infinite feeling where it's something bigger I'm bigger than I'm bigger than what I am right now this you know it's there and that kind of somehow just calms calms my nervous system and you're someone who like I consider as an artist as a creative a creator um and you've had you have many different ways that you express that and you know in different stages of your life as well like have you always been connected in with and in a call that was like, this is what I want to do. And then it's just kind of like, you've just been led in different forms of expression or was it more like you just fell into a path and then it was like, no, this is the one for me. What, what, tell me a bit about that. It's been a very interesting unraveling of this over the last few <laughs> years, actually, but as it always is, as you start mm. doing more self work, but I thought I was always uh, that like acting was something that, because that was kind of my in into kind of creativity was mm. I started training as an actress and auditioning when I was 10 years old. So I was, I was super young and I really thought that it was something that was kind of intuitively there. But I actually, mm -hmm. as I've kind of done a lot of healing work on myself, realized that it was my expression of needing, I needed to desperately be loved. My parents divorced when mm -hmm. I was younger and, and it was about like validation. And so I kind of fell into the creatives. I definitely was naturally creative. I was always doing kind of like gymnastics and being physically creative before, before that intuitively. But I think the kind of path when I was younger into creativity um, was about an external validation that I needed and like that seeking of like, can, can the world love me, please? Um, mm. And then as I've, I, I've got older and I've started to, um, well, really through meditation and a lot of, of, of different kind of healing modalities, started to listen to kind of what is my creative outlet really? Like what is that purpose-filled intuitive thing that we always wanted to come through and as soon as I started meditating I kept getting a voice of being like this is where you were always supposed to be this was the thing if you had like not been consumed in the external world if you had never been like you know hurt or traumatized along the way like this was your your calling was always going to find you into meditation and to guiding this practice and so there's always been a creative spark in me that I've kind of known but how it's come out um, has been yeah a, a path of many directions but I certainly feel this is my authentic uh, intuitive version of creativity at the moment through kind of guiding meditations and uh, yeah in these kind of practices. Amazing and like do you feel like there's multiple ways that we can all express ourselves or do you feel like for you it's like like obviously it will change over time. Like we're only however old we are. Who can possibly knows where the, where it's going to end? And I'm sure there's things that aren't even invented yet that we'll be part of and all of that. But like, do you get a sense that like there's so many different ways that you can express yourself or do you see it more as like a, a clear path? I think there's many different ways we can, we can express ourselves at different times in our lives and I think that changes I guess with that whole thing of intuition of like what feels right for you now which is something that I'm really trying to follow for myself is like what is it in this moment of my life how does this express itself without giving it the limitations that like this is my creative expression so therefore this is I have to stick in this um, and when I kind of transition from acting into into the kind of wellness mindfulness space I just was like let's just drop all um, definitions of ourselves and like this whole thing that once we say that we you know that we're creative as a singer or that we're creative as a performer or in meditation or in art once we've said it we limit ourselves so much and so we kind of put this boundary around ourselves that then makes us a bit fearful to to express ourselves in all these different ways so um, to answer the question in a kind of roundabout way but I do think there's many different ways that we can express ourselves but I I think in different time zones of our life, there's one 
major creative outlet that feels most intuitive I think for each of us yeah I so I so hear you yeah when I reflect back I'm like I feel like there's parts of the journey or even like um energies that you're connecting with or that's the case for me I'd call it like creative muse and if you're working spiritually it could be that you know um where it's like oh they were ready to breathe through me but maybe that yeah I, I remember when I was writing my first book feeling like oh my gosh I've got to get the name the title right it has to be the perfect title whereas really I was like there were so many different ways to express that, you know, there's no right or wrong way, but yeah, when the energy is there, it's like, so there. And yeah, it's interesting, like hearing you talk about, um, all the work that you've done as a child and, and like really unpacking, like, you know, being called to acting. And I I've spoken to a couple of my friends who are actors who have kind of come into this, um, what would you call it? Like this calling. And I think it's interesting the, like, what, what was the dynamic with you of like, when you are an actor, you're kind of playing a part, which I think we all are in our life before we know who we are as well. Like, what was that like? I just, I mean, I hid behind, I found it so comforting in a way to know that it was always, you know, when people, when I was kind of in front of any kind of public space, everyone was asking me about the character. Everyone was asking about like the, the thing. So it was always a kind of hidden safety net, which as you said, you know, we're all acting. Of course we are at all stages and we all have different characters that we play in different environments. But there was definitely a sense when I started coming out into the world and like teaching from a kind of authentic place and just standing up as me, I was like, this is terrifying. And so for the right. first time, like, although... I was in front of less cameras and I was like kind of doing it in a in a much more kind of healing kind environment a lot of the time I found it much more terrifying to be myself and un, unraveling what it was to just stand in front of a group of people and speak as Maud and and because you have to know yourself I guess to do that and I didn't for years of my life I didn't do any kind of digging or self-work I just was like mm. I'm here to entertain and so I can very <laughs> much be outward focusing not inward focusing and I and I didn't I didn't like to ever really like put the focus on me as myself before I thankfully found meditation and, and did a little bit of uh, deep digging and so I could yeah, yeah, finally kind <laughs> and, of yeah get the confidence. And do you feel like you like the, the being called to acting and like playing those roles and getting the the um I guess like uh, the admiration and all of that like did it fill anything within you or was it just always not quite hitting the spot it did at the time I think where I was at the time there was a part of me that did love um I love I've always loved collaboration and I've always loved kind of being in creative environments my mum's an artist and like there was always mm. kind of art, artists around me and so the kind of that side of it I really loved and it did fill this thing of um you know, when you are in the middle of a scene and you're looking at another actor and, and you kind of forget that everything is around you and there's only like there's a moment of magic that happens, which is really like a deep connection with somebody in quite a vulnerable state. That was really beautiful. And that would fill a really big part of me. But I found the life around it not filling the parts that I thought it would. Um, and that, you know, the part of me that was craving validation was constantly seeking more validation because it never quite kind of stuck and um, and I and I've spoken about this before but I found like at parties it was very interesting that I would go to a party and um Helga was from Vikings was the most kind of I guess successful character that I created and I mm. don't necessarily look like an, my on-screen version of that and so I'd go <laughs> to parties and I'd be chatting and and connecting to people and then it would come into conversation of like, what do you do? And I'd say acting. And then I could sense, there was a sense of like, oh, people were suddenly more interested. And I'm like, oh, have you done anything that I would know? And I was like, oh, I've, I'm in this show. Then their interest would get more, more, like more excitable. And then I'd say who I was in it. And it was almost like suddenly they were really interested in me. And I was like, this is interesting because I'm not feeling connected to you because I know that you, like, I get it. We all get quite excited around success, but I really felt this sense of disconnect where I was like, it, five minutes ago when it was just me talking to you about other things, there wasn't so much interest here. And so actually, was it me or was it the kind of acting stuff that, that is interesting? And I used to kind of battle with that quite a lot. Mm, I so I so get you. And do you find that to a lesser extent, like 
now with like, you know, as you're stepping into kind of like playing a more authentic role, but like, I know, I know I do sometimes I'm like, wait, is this who you think I am versus who I actually am? And yeah. It feels really different now to me. I, but you know, the, the thing that I've realized is that it was never about anybody else. It was that at those moments, I didn't know myself. So it, I was looking for this kind of like what I was kind of looking through the eyes of somebody who was insecure, looking for that external validation. And now I'm not saying I never get insecure. Of course I do, but like, and I, I feel more comfortable in myself so that however people are responding to me doesn't feel as kind of heartbreaking or like as, <laughs> as jarring to that version of myself, because I, I, whether they're interested in what I do or not, it doesn't affect me in the same way. I'm just fascinated in connecting to people in, in as many ways as I can. So it, it, it's kind of, I realize that although it does feel different now than it ever has, um, and sometimes people completely disconnect and are not interested as soon as I say meditation, they're like, well, no, not for me. <laughs> um, but it doesn't, it's not the same feeling anymore because I feel really passionate about it. And um, I spoke in an interview recently, somebody said to me, don't you feel it wasn't it a risk to go from a world that was quite glamorous into something that was less glamorous. And I was like, if only you knew the internal version of that, which was the glamorous right. world was so like internally unglamorous. And the, now the unglamorous world is so internally like full of sparkle because I feel good. I was like, it's such an interesting, uh, you know, what, what it looks like from the outside versus what it looks like from the inside is so oh, different. It's so true. And did you, did you have like, a moment of awakening or or was there like one thing that happened that kind of like began the crumbling and the taking off of the masks and the you know stepping into the calling or was it several things along the way and we'll return with Maud's answer right after this short break a quick note to personally invite you to come and check out the sanctuary over the years the sanctuary has organically grown into a thriving community of like-hearted souls from all over the world who like you are on a journey to deepen their connection to the wisdom within the one thing i particularly love about this membership is how practical the tools and practices shared by rebecca campbell on a monthly basis are jumping into a much more spiritual container has been the best thing for me both professionally and personally my favorite thing about being in the membership is being a part of a community of like-minded individuals you can post about anything and you have this wave of humans that are going to wrap you in their arms and support you no matter what my spiritual practice has deepened immensely and that's because there's so much beautiful content available at my fingertips visit rebeccacampbell.me forward slash membership now let's keep returning Was there like one thing that happened that kind of like began the crumbling and the taking off of the masks and the, you know, stepping into the calling or was it several things along the way? It was, no, it was definitely a, a I was approaching my thirties, came out the show, mm. had a horrendous breakup, had to like sell my house very quickly. It was kind of a, literally a firework display of all the things at once, which <laughs> um, I think happens. I mean, most of us, I think, you know, for have a moment, which is like, the crumbling exactly as you describe it which mm -hmm. is always I always pick that card of yours by the way when I'm going through something I was like here we go again um, no! <laughs> it's so annoying when it comes up isn't it yeah, yeah. but brilliant. for anyone who isn't familiar with my cards it's based on the the tower card in the tarot if, if you're familiar with that but yeah it's basically like no everything is on fire no matter what you do the tower is crumbling yeah exactly <laughs> get ready uh, so that yeah. was it. That was like, I just was in this moment where it was like everything I thought I wanted that I had just fell apart. And it was like one thing after the other. And I was suddenly like in the black hole and was just like, what mm. do I do here? Do I, do I crumble or is there a rebuilding that I can start to look at? And, and mm. uh, a friend of mine did the kind of very cliche breakup. Let's go to a yoga and meditation retreat when I hadn't really done any <laughs> of it. And that was the start of me discovering this work but also discovering myself I think oh how amazing yeah it, it is very and so that would have been around your sudden returns as well then yeah 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 it's kind of right on cue it's amazing how that happens and yeah I think that like when I reflect myself and I guess I've seen so many friends go through it it's like 
it's actually almost easier when it all falls apart because like you literally you can't hold it together together anymore so it's like the surrendering is just it's just going to happen because like you know if it's just one area you can kind of cling to the other and yeah yes totally that and it's funny that it does mm. normally no it doesn't always happen like that but it often does doesn't it it's like suddenly it all it all starts to to crumble around but and then you look back and at the moment in the moment it feels horrific and I now just look back at that time and feel so grateful because it was the the turning point really of a pretty destructive few years into something that has really changed my life actually that's so brilliant and like if there was someone going through that at the moment or even just if you were to talk to yourself like what what would you say like allow yourself to like don't be terrified of the black hole I actually got this Mm -hmm. advice from my therapist again recently just it's like we as exactly as you were describing like in areas that suddenly feel a bit like they're out of our control we tend to cling to safety and actually the kindest thing you can do to yourself is just to let it fall away and to sit in the black hole because it's scary for a moment but the quicker you do that the quicker you start to rebuild and to find healthier things to kind of attach yourself to or to start kind of coming out of it so yeah I think my advice if I could look back was to be like don't be afraid of the black hole let yourself go in because it there's a that's probably the quickest way to come through it whoa it's so true it's so true and yeah I mean easier said than done but also like if we just like look at everything in nature it's what it's doing all the time like the rebirth can't literally happen until the winter or you know, the, the rose releases its petals to like maybe one day bloom again. Yeah. yeah. And I think kind of circling back to like where we began our conversation around like the, the pace of life at the moment. And I'm particularly referring to like, I guess like social media, not just social media, but in particular, like the short form content where it's just like, on 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 like and it's going from like 60 seconds to 30 seconds to 10 seconds to five seconds and swipe 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 it's so easy to distract ourselves from what life is like presenting us with and number out and then it's I think it just gets so confusing like the more that we absorb whereas yeah when we're going through a difficult time if we can like find a way to whether it's go on a retreat that'd be amazing (laughs) or even if it's just like yeah having that quiet time in nature you know I I've started doing this um myself lately so I started um my business in um when was it it must have been 20 2012 I did and it was like you know it was just me and then I started having different people working with me helping me like as as I went on and and then that grew and grew and grew and you know I think that part of it can you know turn into something else and I'm constantly trying to go no how can I come back while also honoring that we're mystics in a modern time like it's this constant um thing like being the mystic versus the machine mindfulness versus sharing mindfulness you know this this real dance which I think you know you and I both of us we've called we've been called to 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 kind of um ride that surfboard of finding that balance. And um, yeah, just recently I've just had like a big, a a little bit of a um, a rug pull underneath me, like just in the past 24 hours actually. And actually when I tuned into it and I always go back to journaling when I do, like as in go back to the channel or go back to your soul or whatever it is that is guiding you. The answer is always there. And so often we think we need to like ask everyone's advice or consult with people or work out what the plan is, but ultimately we can reconnect to it at any moment. We just need the space. And when we give ourselves that space, oh my gosh, it comes in an instant in most cases. And sometimes it might be, wait, it's not yet time, which is really annoying. (laughs) But yeah, I, um, I think it it is a really unique unique dance. And so, how how do you? What are some ways that you um, navigate that? Like the your own personal 
speed versus the collective speed. By the way, what you were just saying was resonating so <laughs> much. It's that whole thing that, yeah, you, your intuition is always whispering. It's like, are you listening? Can you hear it? And most of the time in that busyness, you can't. Because I do, like somebody said to me the other day, how do you know the difference between intuition and like over, like, and thinking and thought? I was like, because it's exactly as you said, it just comes to you. Like intuition, when you connect to it, it's mm. always one answer. It's always clear. You don't always want to hear it, but it is always there. And and so for me, it's always um, nature and meditation um, mm. are just the things that, and meditation for me can come in many different forms. Sometimes it's, it's um, breath work. Sometimes it's using kind of music to get me into a place. Sometimes that can be a movement meditation, but stopping coming off social media for a minute and having physical, mental, emotional space for a moment to actually listen to myself again because that's it's when I'm not listening that the world gets chaotic and and things feel I even get that like slight anxious feeling and it's always because I've just gone back I've switched into this external pace that doesn't belong to me mm. and and so when I say yes down, I yeah the way you described that made me like really see it like as if it is this frequency and you that you're vibrating on or even like like a current that you're like we're all going down the the river of life right and yeah as we go down that current we can so easily hook into some other current that you know it's not like it's going to take us somewhere completely different but our own current might be way faster it just might go a different way ultimately I think we end up roughly the same place but you know it's a lot harder to go in someone else's current rather than just like properly trust your own totally my I work with an amazing um somatic therapist so it's like therapy but also like body work as well and she always talks about that like there's these two versions of our life that are always kind of in flow with each other and one of them is that feeling of like you're having to push against life and it's this like that frequency that's faster and it's the doing and like you know I, and it's even I can notice when I'm in it because I even start like rushing around even if I don't have anywhere to be mm. I'm like run to the train station and things um versus flow state which is you know as we we all tap into that at times it's just like your your life feels easy it's like you're leaning back and being supported uh, and for me, it's those two things. It's like which what version and you can kind of dip in and out at all times. Um, and the aim is to just try and stay as flat, flat as you can into this, like leaning back into life. Um, but yeah, it's that I, and the same. It's like two frequencies and one of them doesn't feel like it belongs. It belongs to me. And, and I Whoa. always know that I've, I've popped back into the undesirable frequency. <laughs> Yeah, right. And I wonder how much that frequency is like the frequency of the mind as well. Like, because it's probably the logical one that is just what everyone else is doing, you know? So interesting. Uh, yeah, I, somatic work has been like, it's, I feel it's the only thing that's probably healed my nervous system. And um, yeah, I, I have a, a great um, practitioner as well. And I, I wonder if it's the same thing they're talking about. One thing she said to me is like when I'm when you're laying down on the ground, um, you know, when you can tell if you're kind of still holding yourself up versus like the earth rising to meet you. Oh, my gosh, it's such a subtle shift, but it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This is the thing with all of this stuff. Because, and, you know, you can go through life completely blind to all of it because it's so subtle and you can choose to you can choose to ignore it and we can all choose to ignore it. But when you tap into it, that tiny shift can feel the difference between anxiety and deep relaxation. It can feel the difference between being completely logical to being completely intuitive. So like the internal shift is like a complete game changer. Um, but it's, yeah. So true. So, okay, I've got a question for you that I ask everyone. It is, um, what were you like? as a little girl that would help us understand you more today? Mm, I was a complete people pleaser. I wanted to make everyone feel good. I didn't like anyone being unsettled. And um, everyone thought I was going to be a nurse when I grew up because I always used to carry around a little like first aid kit. <laughs> and then I got hurt, <laughs> I'd, like run around with plasters. Um, and um, I, yeah, I think I was quite 
I think I was quite shy, but my main sense of myself at that age was just like really wanting everyone to be okay. And very, mm. I, looking back now, but in retrospect, I just, you know, I, I didn't really even connect to myself or what I needed ever, but I was very mm. much a kind of deep uh, empath that felt everything everyone felt and wanted to make life okay for everyone. Well, oh, I can see that in you and how, yeah, you kind of give it to yourself now in order to give to everyone else as well. Yeah, Mm, finally. Beautiful. (laughs) Hey! (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then, yeah, then my final question, which again I ask everyone, what returns you to the wisdom within? Meditation. And yeah, self-inquiry journaling for me is really helpful as well, but for really meditation and nature walks. Um, Mm. yeah, when I can start listening to that, to that inner voice. Amazing. Thank you so much, Maud. Can you share what's coming up for you, what you're working on, what, what's lighting you up right now? So I have some Oracle cards coming out in 2024, which I'm really excited about Amazing. Um, that I've been collaborating. Yeah, I'm very, very excited for them to come out all around kind of transformation and, and what we've been discussing today. Um, and then I have my membership, which is always continually going on, um, which I, I love. And it's a virtual membership and um, kind of we meditate, we check in. It's just the most beautiful community from all over the world um, one to one mentorships. Uh, And just, yeah, helping people trying to find their intuitive voice and really know what that sounds like uh, using the really powerful tools of of meditation and breath work. Amazing. Thank you so much, Maud. We'll we'll include all details on that in the the show notes um, so everyone can dive more into your world if they don't already know all about it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Soul Inquiry is a practice where we enter into a direct dialogue with our inner, wise, intuitive self. Today's Soul Inquiry prompt is, what in your life is calling for a change in pace? What in your life is calling for a change in pace? What in your life is calling for a change in pace? And what is one baby step you can take in that direction today? Let's share a deep breath together as we close this sacred space we've stepped into. I'm so grateful for you being here. If you'd like to keep returning to yourself and returning here with me, then please hit subscribe. If you love this episode, leaving a five-star review really helps um, others to find it too. So thank you for doing that. And as always, you can find the show notes from today's episode over at rebeccacampbell.me forward slash podcast. Thanks for returning.